Welcome to week three of yoga. We are gonna be incorporating balance, so building up that muscle a little bit. So for this practice, you may need a block, something to help support you with balancing if you wobble, if you know that you're a little weak, or even a chair for support. So by all means, use anything that you know that's gonna help support you to get you stronger and towards your goals. It's okay to ask for help. So grab a chair, grab a uh, block, anything that you know that you're gonna need uh, to incorporate a little bit more of balance skills here. So grab your mats, any props, and I'll meet you there. So we are going to start in child's pose. So our knees are wide apart, toes are touching. And just allow your head to melt on the mat. Come into your breath. Find this moment of bliss, connect into your body, allowing it to move in any which way that it wants to move. Take a nice deep breath in, and exhale out. Maybe if you want to incorporate that ujjayi breath, just to loosen up the muscles here, relaxing any tension. You just start to think of what balance means to you. Does it mean having an equal proportion, or does it mean to exert your energy to something at the time that it needs? So, for instance, maybe you need to dedicate three hours to work or your business. Or maybe work that nine to five job. So that's a good portion of your day. And how can you balance spending some time with the family or cooking? Everything exerts a little bit of energy. And is that balanced to you? When you can dedicate the proper amount of time that each area requires. Just gently bring up awareness to what balance means to you. Take a deep breath in. And exhale out. Slowly begin to walk your hands in front of you. And come onto your hands and knees for a tabletop position. We're going to start by doing some dancing lines. So walk your hands out a little bit further in front of you. Start to lean your hips towards the right, towards the center, then towards the left, then pull them back and continue making these big hip circles, pressing into the L and J space between your hands, the base of your wrists, engaging that core slightly to protect the spine and just analyze the muscles being involved to make this circular movement. Find your breath, take one more. And when you come back up to a tabletop position, move the opposite way. If you wanna incorporate a little bit of neck circles as well. And just notice the shifts within your muscles. And that may be the way that you were doing it one way feels different. And that's okay. Just being the witness of what's going on. Take one more. And then we're gonna come up into that tabletop position here. So you walk your knees up a little bit, stacked underneath your hips, hands underneath your shoulders. We're gonna tuck the toes. We're gonna send the hips down and back for our first downward facing dog. Really pressing into those hands, 
And just hold here, allowing everything to reverse itself. Notice that you might be a little bit stronger holding these downward dog positions. That belly is slightly tucked in. You can have micro bend within the knees. Feel the balls of your feet and take a look at your ankles. Are they stacked and in line with your legs? Or do they kind of flare out either direction? What muscles do you need to activate? Or how can you move to create that alignment that feels comfortable, maybe challenging because it's different, but that might realign your whole body as a whole. Take a deep breath in and exhale out. Come back to drop your knees slightly and we're gonna come into a hovering table. So we're coming as if we're in a tabletop position and our knees hover. Engage the lower pelvic floor muscles, engage that lower abs, and really press through that base of your wrist and that L and J space. Really feels, feel the pads of your fingertips pressing in as you press your shoulders away from you. Feel those shoulder blades separate. Find what muscles are being activated here. Remember to breathe. Five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna extend the legs back, engage those quads to help send those legs back. Press into that left leg. Notice the shift that happens within your hips as you draw that right knee in between your hands. And just hold here. We're gonna to start to square the hips, reach through the back of that left heel. You're high up on the balls of the feet, engage in that arch, press into that right heel as it's in line with that right knee, elongate that spine. We're gonna inhale, press into the posterior chain so your back to help lift you up into a high crescent lunge. If you wanna have a micro bend within that left knee, you can. And notice the shift that is created within the hips as you do this. Take a deep breath in and exhale out. Inhale. And on our exhale, we're gonna take three knee dips. So move towards the toes as you drop that left knee down. Squeeze those glutes, press into your heels, and then straighten that left leg. Two. Yes, you can. And one. We'll begin to frame that foot and then send that right leg back and up for a three-legged dog. So your right leg is pointed towards the ceiling. You're rooted within that left ankle. And then allow that right knee to come towards the mat and pedal out your dog. Find your breath. And then press into that right leg. Reach that left leg up and then exhale. We're gonna send that left foot in between the hands for a high lunge. Pressing up into that left, pressing into that right heel, high on those toes, arches engaged. Pressing into that left heel, left knee is stacked over. Square the hips, elongate that spine and reach as if you're pressing your head into someone's hand as you lift yourself up. Hands come up overhead. And notice the difference. If you need a micro bend within that right knee, you can do so. And just hold. Find your breath. Your hips are squared. Maybe you feel it in the left hip flexor. Take a deep breath in. We're going to do those knee dips, so exhale, drop onto that right knee. Press into those heels and activate that right quad as you straighten that right knee. Exhale, two, and one. Frame that left foot slowly, engage that core, and send that left leg back and up for that three-legged dog, point towards the ceiling. And then exhale to release. Press into both feet, walking one leg at a time. You're doing great. 
And just notice, observe what's going on in the head, your breath, and the movement of your body. Does it feel heavy or light? And just observe it. It's okay with wherever you're at. Because as long as you continue to do these little goals for yourself, then that's how you can improve. But really, how can you enjoy the journey? Begin to walk your hands back towards your feet for a forward fold. So you're pressing into those heels, activating all three parts of the feet. So the, the balls of the feet from the thumb towards the pinky and the heel. Activate in that arch. Really send the hips up like you're trying to stick your butt up towards the ceiling. Belly button is slightly tucked and allow your torso to melt. Your neck is heavy. Take a deep breath in and exhale out. I want you to think of an area of life that is requiring a little bit more of your attention that you haven't been putting enough energy into. What place might that be? Take a deep breath in. The first answer that comes to mind is typically the right answer. And you might not know how, and that's okay. But just bring an awareness that that's what is needed in your life. Slowly press into those heels, activate those hamstrings and glutes as you start to pull yourself slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, tucking in that belly, rising all the way up. Shoulders are the last to go. And we're gonna spread the feet about hip width apart. Tuck that pelvis slightly, so place your hands on your hip and really feel your hips. Are they square? Do they feel like one's moving in front? Or does it feel like you are tilting your pelvic forward a little bit? Or is your lower back kind of rounded? And then see if you can find some neutral pelvis. If you have a block here or a pillow, you can place it in between your legs. And this kind of helps activate those arches of the feet and those inner thighs. So take a deep breath in. Palms are facing forward, a few inches away from the body. Shoulders are down and relaxed. Relax the jaw and maybe close the eyes. Mountain pose. How's your balance? Are you wobbling? Are you struggling to keep your eyes closed? Are you reaching through the top of your head? I know there's so many cues, but the more you practice, the easier it becomes, it's more effortless. And you don't have to be thinking about every single thing and you can just think, you can witness your thoughts. Take a deep breath in and exhale out. Your next inhale, inhale your hands up overhead we're gonna interlace our fingers besides the pointer finger. So the pointer finger points up towards the ceiling and all other ones are interlaced. We're gonna come into a half moon. So press into that left foot as you send the hips over towards the left and you laterally bend your hands over towards the right. Engage those right obliques here. Press it into that left foot, left foot for support and balance. Our chest is posing in front of us, so we're not round in the back. Maybe engage the lats a little bit. The shoulder muscles as, as you're actively reaching through all the way towards that pointer finger, reaching towards the opposite side of your foot. Take a deep breath in and exhale out. Inhale, slowly come back up to center. Reorganize yourself. Press into that right leg, send the hips over towards the right, and laterally bend over towards the left. Really reaching through your arms. Pulling your arms back towards your ears. Chest is expanded up. Take a deep breath in, and exhale out. 
slowly inhale, come back up to center. You can release your hands here. Shake out your feet if you need to. We're gonna place our hands on our hips here, press into that left leg. And we're gonna come into a balikasana, crane pose. So feel your, ang your ankle being rooted and anchored down. Press it into the pads of the foot, activating that arch. Lift up through the crown, easy on the knee. So you maybe have a little micro bend. Engage that lower pelvic floor muscles, your lower abs, reach the crown, and then inhale that right knee up at a 90 degree ang angle as if you're about to press onto a box. So really activate and drive through that right knee. Find your stability. If you wobble, that's great. Your hands can either stay on your hips here for support, or you can spread them out or, over or overhead. Find your core, find your balance. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly with control, release that right leg and cross it over your left. Inhale your hands up overhead and exhale. Take a nice forward fold, reaching those sit bones up towards the ceiling, feeling the rotation of your femur. Trying to keep the knees stacked. If you need a block here to place onto your hands, maybe the chair, take a deep breath in. This is great for sciatica and exhale out. For people who have pinched nerves in the lower back or maybe the hips. Take one more deep breath in and exhale out. Slowly lift from the crown as if you're coming into a halfway lift, your flat back, and then slowly continue that all the way up and uncross your legs, shake it out. Take a moment to just be really proud of yourself that you can do this and that you will get there. Maybe you already are, so how can you challenge yourself more? Start to press into that right leg. Hips are squared. The lower abs are engaged. Reach up through that crown of the head. Shoulders are relaxed. And then when you're ready, start to feel that hip flexor. Elevate that left knee. Driving from that left knee. You're flexing your left toes so you're about to press on something. So your toes are not pointed down. They're kind of flexed in a flat neutral position. Feel your hip flexors on both sides, squeezing that right glute for support. Take a deep breath in, You're almost there. Exhale out, find a focal point, find a dristi. And slowly with control, cross that left leg over the right. Always engaging your core helps with stability and with balance so that your other limbs can relax. Inhale your hands up overhead and exhale forward fold. Notice what different sensations you're feeling. Maybe one side is tighter than the other. So is the other side weak or is the other side overactive? Maybe it's a combination of both. Take a deep breath in and exhale out. Slowly begin to lift that head as if you're coming into that halfway lift and slowly rise up and do the cross. Just notice what you feel. Come back into mountain pose here. So spreading those feet hip width apart. Really f look at your ankles. Are they caving in or out? And how can you keep them in a neutral position? Meanwhile, activating the arches of your feet. Squeezing the glutes just gently here. Lift up from the crown. And 
Maybe engage that ujjayi breath. Train your mind to soothe itself in chaos. Slowly inhale your hands up overhead and exhale forward fold. And now I, you can cross your elbows here, rock side to side, whatever feels right for you. And I just want to ask you, where are you exerting too much of your energy? Energy that it's draining you. Is it somebody? Is it something? Is it a habit? What are you putting too much energy towards that could require a little less? Maybe setting some boundaries. And just be honest with yourself. And that's okay. What's distracting you from your goal? Slowly begin to walk your hands out in front of you for a downward facing dog. And then come into a tabletop position. We're gonna spread the knees a little bit wider here. So maybe just take them out one inch or so. Untuck the toes. We're going to come into a hero's pose, Virasana. So if you need a block here or a pillow, stack some towels, you can do so. If this bothers your knees, you can also place a towel behind the knee. Just kind of roll it up or fold it up. And then we're going to send the hips in between the feet. So some people say that this posture is bad for you, and it's only bad if you are in any discomfort and you're not being honest with your body. But this is a great deep hip opener. And if you have a towel behind your knees, you might probably need a pillow or a block to elevate the hips a little bit. I'm just going to be here for two more breaths. So really feel your breath. Feel this deep hip opener. One more. You can slowly press into your hands to help guide you back up. So you don't wanna use your knees, you wanna use your hands to elevate you. And then we're gonna come onto our backs here. Keep the knees bent. And we're gonna come into Ananda Balasana. So happy baby. So begin to draw your knees in towards your chest and then spread your knees open. Point the heels and the soles of the feet towards the ceiling. And then we're going to bring our hands on the inside of our knees, wrapping towards the outside of our feet, pulling our knees in towards our chest or towards the mat, and try to flatten your back here. So you're pressing your lower back into the mat. So it's kind of like you're sticking your butt out. Notice the sensations that you feel in this deep hip opener. Maybe you want to rock side to side here. Take two more deep breaths in. And exhale out. Slowly release the legs here. Plant the soles of the feet on the mat. Knees are still pointing up. And just come to an easy resting pose. Allow the body to adjust itself. Take a deep breath in. And exhale out.
slowly with control you can release your legs here feet naturally splay out the shoulders are down and relaxed eyes are heavy jaws unhooked come back to your breath and just think what changes need to be made to live a more balanced lifestyle Take a nice deep breath in from the nose and exhale out. Slowly, whenever you're ready, you can wiggle your fingers, your toes, making any movements that feels good. Taking a nice Big stretch. When you're ready, you want to either side into a fetal position. I'll help guide you up and come into a cross legged seated position. a cross-legged seated position eyes are closed hands come onto your knees sit in up tall relaxing the upper body the shoulders the head just take, take a moment for yourself I hope you guys felt a sense of balance and also a sense of challenge and courage. I appreciate you for being here. Namaste.